color kids this is katie carty highly from rainbowbright.net welcome back to the rainbow land museum and what is a first for me i'm going to be doing a tutorial video today and this has to do with customizing one of the new 16 inch stormy dolls from hallmark uh, because as beautiful and wonderful as that doll is there were a couple details about her that were not screen accurate, even though the rest of her was. So I wanted a custom version where she was completely screen accurate. Uh, so my friend Michael Ron rerouted her hair for me so that she would have the correct color yarn hair. Um, I did not do that myself. I claim no credit. I have no experience rerouting hair. Uh, that was all him and he's amazing at it. So I'm going to put a link to the video he taught himself how to reroute hair from, um, but I'm not gonna be teaching you how to do that because I don't know how to do that. Um, but what this video is going to be about is about switching her boots because the other detail that was incorrect is the lightning bolts on her boots are pointing the wrong direction. So I'm going to hold up the completed custom beside one of the originals from Hallmark to show you the differences. So the hair color is obviously very different. Um, I figured out a better word that I like for her hair color. This is hot purple. You know how there's hot pink? This is hot purple. Because <laughs> it's just super bright and vibrant and saturated, all that. But it's not what she looked like in the cartoon. This was her hair color in the cartoon. This beautiful lilac color. And he made it nice and long. And of course did the braid. Love it! And put the uh, lightning bolt back on, gave her a bit of a poof up here. He did an amazing job on her hair. Uh, maybe one day he'll do a tutorial video, but I'll put a link to the video that he used to teach himself how to reboot hair because he, yeah, nobody told him. He found a video online that had to do with Cabbage Patch dolls and how to reboot their hair and taught himself from that. So if you want to learn how to reboot hair, I'll show you how he taught himself how to do it, but he gets all the credit for doing her hair. Um, but here are the boots. So on the one from Hallmark, they are pointing down from the middle, making like an upside down V, when they should be like this, pointing down in the middle to make an actual like V shape. Um, this is the way she looks in the TV show and the movie. So this video is going to show you how my, well, I would say me and my mother-in-law, but it was really all my mother-in-law switched her boots. So let me set these down. And I want to let you know that it was all hand stitching that we did, but she described it as like intermediate level hand stitching. So if you've done a little bit of hand stitching before, you may be able to do this, but it's a little tricky, It's at least in parts. Um, so I would not recommend doing this if you're a novice or have hardly done any hand stitching. Um, myself, I may be able to reproduce what she did because i a little bit better than a beginner with hand stitching, but not much. Um, so I'm really glad that she took over and just did this for me and let me take pictures and video along the way to show you guys exactly how she did it. But again, I can claim no credit. I didn't do this because I'm not a crafty person in, in, in general, but I wanted it done and it was a fun activity to do over Thanksgiving while she was visiting. So what I'm going to be doing with this video, you're not going to see me for, through most of it. I'm going to show, it's like a, a slideshow I'm going to be doing with the different pictures, um, but I'm going to be describing what you're seeing in the pictures as we go. So you'll hear me talking, but you'll be looking at pictures. So you'll probably hear a little bit of clicking around or me pushing buttons to advance to the next picture so that <laughs> I know what I'm looking at. So we're going to start with... This is what we started out with was a headless Stormy. And the reason her head was off was because we had not yet put the new head that Michael sent me on the doll. We had just taken off the old one just to get it out of the way. So we had less to deal with basically. Um, but so yeah, there was no, you don't need to take her head off to switch her boots. It was just already off. So <laughs> I just wanted to explain. But here was the doll as she began. And then if you look closely, this is what her boots look like attached to her legs. And you really can't tell um, until you pull up the cuff, which I'll show you in a moment, how it's stitched. Um, but it is stitched to the leg at that point. So 
next picture. So yeah, if you pull the cuff up, you'll see, and depending on the doll and depending on the leg, <laughs> I'll show you what I'm talking about in a moment, you may see only one line of stitches, you may see two initially. Eventually you'll see them both, because there are actually two lines of stitching, um, but we're only going to be dealing with one of them, and we're going to avoid the other, and I will tell you why in a moment. But that's those big white stitches, that's what we're going to be taking off and replacing. And you can see a little bit here on the left, it blends in really well with the boot color, but that light blue stitching, if you see that on the left, um, those are the ones we do not want to cut. I'm just going to mention that now, but there's another picture that shows those better, so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and what to avoid. Here we go. This picture shows them both. Because, yeah, again, each boot, when you pulled up the cuff, or at least in different spots on the cuff, it would look different. Like, sometimes you could see both stitches, sometimes you couldn't. Um, but basically, the light blue stitching is the pleat stitch. So that's what's giving it this pleated look where it's kind of bunched up. Um, you do not want to cut that because if you do, you're going to have to re-pleat it. And I've never done that before, but I've heard that it's a pain in the butt. So, if at all possible, do not cut those stitches. And if you accidentally cut one, try to just repair it right then and there on that section instead of like pulling it all out and then redoing it. Um, but what we're going to start with here are these big white stitches. So we took, well, let me show you the back first. Um, if you look at the back of the leg, the cuff is sewn into the boot all the way through the middle. So the cuff doesn't come up all the way around. It's just on like the front and the sides. In the back, it's actually stitched even further into the boot not just to the leg, but that will come into play in a bit, but I just wanted to show you that. So here we got out a, a seam ripper, and I would definitely recommend using that for the job. I would not recommend scissors because it's pretty tight in there, and a seam ripper is really good at getting into tight spaces and helping you cut those stitches. So this is where we first start pushing it in, there's just another view of the same thing. And this is what it looks like once you've cut a few. So let me go back for half a second. Um, if you can see the seam ripper, what that does, if you've never used one of these, although if you've never used one of these, you probably should just walk away now. Um, <laughs> but that point that's about to go under the stitch there goes all the way under, and then the middle section up above there is sharp, so when it when it gets to where it would end, kind of that little roundish area in the middle, um, that's a sharp edge and that cuts through the stitch. But here we've already cut the stitch, or cut one or two, and started pulling at them, because once you cut one or two of the stitches, the rest start coming out on their own. You don't have to cut every single one, because they're all connected. It's one long strand of thread that's been stitched through this, so you don't necessarily have to keep cutting, you can just start pulling at some point. Um, but then, if you flip it over, because we weren't sure once we started cutting if it was just stitched to the boot itself, or if the stitches went all the way through to the leg. It was, yeah, it wasn't really clear if the cuff was attached just to the boot or to the boot and the leg, and it's, it's attached to both. So you can see it's attached to the boot underneath, and if you just turn it over after you've pulled out, pulled out a few stitches, you can see it's also attached to the leg. So their stitches went through both. So once we saw that, we're like, okay, this is going to be a little more complicated than we thought, but not impossible. So we continued on, kept pulling out stitches, making sure to avoid those light blue pleat stitches until we got them all off. And then at the back there were a few more stitches than around the rest of the leg because it is attached, again, it's, it's attached more right there at the seam on the back of the boot. 
there are more stitches there than there were around the outside, so you probably need to use the seam ripper again to get it off uh, of the back. There's no just pulling it off at that point. And yeah, it looks a little scary if you look at it from the inside, but just take it slow, look at what you're doing, just look for those white stitches, and realize that's what you're looking to pull out and then you'll get it off. And again, you don't have to pull out all the ones down the back of the seam of the boot. You don't want to do that because then you'd have to redo all of that as well. You're just wanting to undo the very top stitches so that you can get the boot off of the leg. And here it is from the other angle. So you can see that the cuff is still attached to the boot in the back. You don't completely disconnect the cuff from the boot um, you just disconnect it all around, but not on the back where that seam is. You want to you want to keep that there. So here's Stormy without one boot. <laughs> One-legged Stormy. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the next boot and do the same thing. So in this picture, you can see the seam ripper a little better, and it's in this picture you can see it's almost at the sharp point. That little half circle, half moon, whatever that it's coming up on, that's the sharp edge that's going to cut the stitch. So we just did the exact same thing on this boot. Um, but then again, let me back up. And again, you can see on here, you can see the white stitches, but you cannot see the light blue stitches yet until you start removing them. Because on this boot, they were much higher as you can see, again, they blend in with the blue of the boot, so you have to look pretty close. Um, and this one also had, you can see, this white and black edge to the material that we couldn't see on the other boot. So some are going to look slightly different than others, but the stitching should look the same. And again, you're just atta attacking the white stitching, not the light blue. So the light blue may be above or below the white and it could be really close to it or further away, such as this one where it's really close to the edge. But just wanted to give you an idea what to look for. And there's the back again. And again from the inside view. And again, you just start cutting the stitches around the back of the cuff as well. But you don't have to go down very far. You're just getting the top ones that have it attached to the leg. And on this one, as you can see, there were a lot of stitches that had it attached to the leg. I guess that's kind of their anchor point, so there were more stitches that needed to be disconnected or cut through. Um, but yeah, you need, to cut, you need to cut all of those so that you can detach the boot and the cuff from the leg completely. And now we have a stormy body with no legs attached, or no boots, sorry, <laughs> she still has her legs, but with no boots attached. So now we're going to deal with just the boots, because we have to get that cuff attached to the boot again before we put the boot back on the leg. So you want to pull the boot up and I think this might be in one of the pictures coming up, but you may want to stuff the stuffing down inside a bit just so it's out of your way. But yeah, you want to pull the cuff down and pull the boot up. So when they're level with each other, that's where you want them to stay because you're going to be stitching the green cuff to the blue boot right there around the top um, where they're at the same level. Oh, and by the way, this is the yarn that I had laying around. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have a color listed on it anywhere, but I just took pictures of it so you could see exactly what I used. You don't have to use this same thread by any means, but this is what I used. And it just happened, the color happened to be very, very close to her leg color, so we got lucky that I happened to have that already. But that, that is what I would, rec would recommend using, is a color that's close to her leg color, because if you're going to see it at all, um, you want it to match so it's less noticeable. But hopefully if you do it right, like we did, <laughs> you won't really see it. 
So then you're going to start stitching the cuff back to the boot. And like I said, you're going to go right around, right over the top. So they're going to be at the same level in this. Let me look at my notes again. Uh, yeah, this is just a whip stitch is what you're doing. So you're just kind of going around and around and I'll show you a picture in a moment of what that looks like after a few stitches have been done. There you can see she's done, I think there's four, um, working on the fifth one in this picture. So you're just going above, you know, over top, then back through, over top, back through, over top, back through. And she wasn't doing it super close together, um, and that, that was perfectly fine in the end. You don't have to do them like every tiny millimeter. You know, you can, you should, you can uh, stretch them out a little bit. There can be a little bit of space between them. Um, and something we figured out later that we would have done slightly differently at this point is when you're doing this whip stitch, don't do it too tightly. Uh, definitely do it tight enough that it's going to stay, but we realized that we did it so tight that when we went to do something later, it had the tendency to curl inward and that made it harder to work with. So when you do the whip stitch, just do it kind of uh, lightly. Don't do it too tight. And so here's what I'm talking about, how it curls in. Uh, but this is basically what you've got when you're done is you've got these stitches going all the way around. So that's what it looks like when it's finished off. And we, you know, pulled it back up when we took this picture, but even after we took the picture, it started curling back in again. <laughs> so yeah, you had to kind of work at it to get it to, to go back up straight. So just be careful with those whip stitches, not to do them too tightly. But all you have to do is right around the top to get those connected. There it is from another angle. And then if you pull up the cuff, you'll be able to see your stitches underneath, just like the ones that you cut initially. But these stitches are only connecting the cuff to the boot, not uh, the cuff to the boot and the leg. And they don't have to look pretty because again, these are going to be underneath the cuff. Nobody's going to see these unless they lift up the cuff. <laughs> so there's one of them stitched, ready to go. And actually that picture may have been after they were both done. Uh, it's hard to tell. <laughs> but also when you cut off the boots from the leg, some of the stitches ended up coming out of the leg them, legs themselves on the back, that back seam. So the ideal thing to do would be to fix those first before you start reattaching the boots and to do it from the inside since you have that ability at this point. You would just push the stuffing back up, redo those stitches from the inside so that the back seam is perfect again, and then put the boot back on. We didn't take the time to do that, but if I were to do it again, I would do that at this point before you start reattaching the boots. So here's the boot again with it curling in, <laughs> but we pulled it back up so that it was pretty flat. And then you want to push the stuffing up inside the leg. Um, I had a thought of adding more stuffing, but it actually got in the way. Um, and these dolls have enough stuffing as it is in their legs and in the boots, so you don't need to add any, and you shouldn't need to take any away either. Just push it up inside the leg so it's out of your way while you're doing your stitches. And there's a picture with it just showing that it is pushed up inside. And then to get the boot up inside the leg, we at first were trying this method where we were kind of squishing it um, into a smaller version of itself and trying to stuff it up inside the leg, but it never would stay. So ignore this. I just want to show you what we tried first that didn't really work and we ended up going a different direction. What we actually ended up doing was just putting the back of the boot up inside the back of the leg at the seam and starting there. 
um, and we used pins to pin the boot to the leg before we did any stitching. But this just shows how we were putting it up inside the leg. And here is the first pin going through to pin it to the leg. And that's what it looks like after it's all been pinned. Now I'm going to stick a quick video in here because I recorded a video of her putting two or three of the pins in the leg so that you can see exactly how she did that because that part was a little tricky um, just to getting it just to get it to stay still while you're trying to get these pins in it because you really need it pinned before you do any stitching or it just flops all over the place. <laughs> so here's a quick video interlude. Okay, so let me pull it out. Right, so push it up because you don't want that in the way right now. And push this down. And then, okay, now I got it, I think. Sorry. While we're doing the video, this is the tricky part. <laughs> Just do the rest around yep. mm -hmm. before you start stitching. Awesome. And now we are back. At this point, the boot is pinned to the leg and we're going to start stitching. So she's already got the uh, thread started, but here we go with the first real stitch. And we're having to do this on the outside because. The only other way to do this would be to turn the entire leg inside out, do it from the inside and reattach it somehow to the body. Um, so there's a, okay, a few, there are three methods I can think of that you could go about switching the legs or the boots. This is method number one, where you just switch the boots themselves. Method number two would be to take the legs off for, just from the body from the outside which I don't think would look very good, but you might be able to cover it up um, if you cut it really, really close to the body and then stitched it back on from underneath the body. So you would still be stitching it on the outside, but it would be from underneath, so hopefully it wouldn't show up too bad. Um, although I don't think that would be a good method. It's just a method that <laughs> exists. And then a third method, which I may, I may try one day just to see if it looks any better or if it's any easier, is to take the head off, unstitch the back a little bit, take all the stuffing out of the body of the doll, turn her inside out, unstitch the legs from the inside, and then stitch them back from the inside, and then stitch her back up um, on the top of her back. So the only outer stitching you would see would be on the upper part of her back, which would be probably covered by her hair. So that's another method. But anyway, back to what, back to the method we are using today. Um, yeah, you're going to do really small stitches. And again, this is just the whip stitch again, but you want to do them closer together and you want to make them as small as possible between the green cuff, which includes the boot. Cause like I showed you before, the boot and the cuff are at the same level at this point after you've attached them. Um, but really you're just stitching it to the green part. You don't have to worry about going too deep when you're stitching through. You just want to make sure it's at least attached to the cuff. And then you pull it through and you keep going <laughs> all the way around until you get to the back. And since the seams had come apart a little bit on the leg and the cuff itself, 
we went ahead and repaired that from the outside with the same thread. Um, and on the leg, again, it's, it's the right color. On the boot, it was not. If you have some green thread that's that color, or if you can get some, you may want to use green to redo that stitch. And again, that may have been something we could have done from the inside before we attached this to the leg, but we didn't. So uh, you'll see in later photos that you can actually see those stitches from the outside, but you could probably repair that from the inside first and then just have the outer stitches that attach it to the leg be the only thing visible. Here, in this picture you can see, um, I'm not sure why on the right there there's a few extra stitches but that may again have just been fixing and again this is on the back of the leg as well so most people aren't going to see this um when you display your doll you're probably going to have her either sitting down or with standing up with a doll stand but facing forward so unless somebody turns her around or picks her leg up they're not going to see what you did um so this doesn't really matter but if you want it to look prettier than this i would get some green thread for the uh, other thing the cuff and then do both of those repairs inside before doing the outer stitches. But as you can see on the left, you can't see any of those stitches that attach the boot to the leg, even though they're there. Um, on the right, you can just see a few, but this is actually the, the completed leg right here. And here it is from the front. And I think there may be a, another picture in here closer up, but because the cuff turns up a little bit that actually works in your favor in the end you really can't see those outer stitches that attach the boot back to the leg unless you pull the cuff down and really look for them um, because the boot just naturally curls up a little bit around the leg and you just can't see them at all if you use the right color thread so we were actually really thrilled with how that turned out um, I was worried that we were going to be able to see a lot of those stitches but you really can't because the cuff hides them really well. So there's one down. And actually, before we were completely done with that one, we went back, or she went back, I should say, and did, let me look at my notes again. This was a running stitch. So she pulled the cuff back up, and this was just to secure it to the leg a little bit more. Um, this is not something you would necessarily have to do. It was just one of those things we wanted to do to give it a little more security, rigidity, whatever you want to call it. Because um, again, no kids are going to be playing with this doll. Customs like this, you don't want them to because they take so much work um, and sometimes are a bit more fragile than the original doll. Uh, so you don't want kids pulling on this because they, they could pull the boot off and then you have to do all this again. But anyway, this was just an added security feature, if you if you will. And we just called it a secure running stitch, but it's... so it, Okay, it is slightly different than a regular running stitch, and I'll show you in the pictures here why. Um, so she would go through... And maybe it's the next picture. But here, that just again shows you where she is doing this running stitch. But yeah, so she'd pull... Go, she'd go through, pull it all the way up, then go behind it and put the, the needle through again and then go further up. Okay, so you see where the needle is coming out of. So she went back behind the previous stitch before she made the next one. So she kept doing that. She kept going behind the previous stitch before the next one. That just made it a bit more of a secure of a stitch than a regular running stitch. I think you can see in that photo as well. Yeah. And she did that all the way around. But again, not necessary. It was just an extra precaution that we took. Um, and here's the other leg. And again, it needed fixing. So I think, again, we did it after the fact. But I would recommend doing that first before you put the boot back on. And again, the seam on the back of the boot needed fixing too. Some of that, it just comes out when you're removing the boot from the leg. But we did all the same thing again. Uh, so there's no point in showing you all those pictures again because we just repeated the same process to get the boot on the other leg. 
and there she is. And I'm pretty sure that's the last photo. Let me double check. Yep. So I'm going to do a different video showing you about the head, how to remove the head and how to put it back on because this video is already really long. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, just in case you want to do, if you want to try the other method that I mentioned, uh, where you unstitch a bit of her back, take out the stuffing, turn her inside out, take the legs off, put them back on, restitch her from the inside, put the stuffing back in, and then stitch up her back from the outside a little bit. Um, that's the other option. Um, so you might want to know how to take the head off and put it back on for that purpose. But also if you're thinking of rerouting the hair, you would also need to know how to do that. So I'll do another video that shows how we did the head or how we removed it and put it back on. We didn't do the rerouting. I'll mention again, that was all Michael Ron. He's amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll at least do a video to show you what the zip tie looks like and how we went about doing that. So yeah, that's it for this. I hope that this made sense. If you have any questions, if something wasn't clear, absolutely feel free to ask me. If I don't know, I can ask my mother-in-law. Maybe she will know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun actually doing this. It was a fun family project to do over the holidays. So, but if you're, yeah, at least intermediately good at hand stitching, you shouldn't have much of a problem doing this. It wasn't the most difficult thing in the world. It was just a little tricky in spots and pinning it to the leg before stitching definitely helped. So I hope that helps and I guess that's it for now. <laughs> Have a rainbow day. Bye.